So, while we were in Denmark a couple weeks ago, last week was it last week? Yeah, last last week. Um, we stole some sculpts from some of the students. We got permission to steal some sculpts from some of the students, and uh, and we've taken a few of these to highlight a few key examples that tends to happen when you start out sculpting for your like maybe it's the first time or maybe you've been doing it for a few months or maybe in in some cases for people it's been years you know they do the same exact thing over and over again so do you have pure ref yes uh, for those of you who don't know pure ref is the most magical thing ever it's it's, magical. it's called pure ref um, spelled exactly that way and it allows you to have tons of cool images uh, right on top of your screen like this yeah i even prefer this over um, Overdoing like over a second monitor, uh, just because you uh, you can just have tons of references. So instead of this is this is gonna sound the laziest thing in the whole world, but instead of doing this and moving your body to the second monitor, you just move your eyes. Yeah, sounds like a small lazy CG artist thing to do, <laughs> but in reality, these kind of things can actually make a, make a big difference. Okay, so here we have this. So what this oh okay. was this student? She was uh, she was doing was. Um, calling it a bat cat I think it was um, <laughs> and, uh, it's a combination of a bat and a cat but what, I, what we want to highlight here is there's clean shapes is really what you want to focus on when you're sculpting and so I'll mostly be focusing on the face for this one but there's also there are also issues with the body which we'll cover a little later so usually when we when we get a sculpt like this and we start to go over it the first thing we do is just we destroy everything that's there. Make a new layer this way. It's um it's it's sort of like it's the best way to oh let's do this. Because now we can just compare back and forth, it's just so you don't want to be sort of constrained by what's been done before. So oftentimes a lot of the form that already exists, if it's created by someone who don't who doesn't really understand what they're doing with the form, it can be really hard to sort of fix it. So sometimes you just have to nuke a lot of it and then basically you don't start from scratch because they still have they stay still laid some of the groundwork but there are still issues that we can fix the overall design might be there it's just that the fun the foundation might not be yeah yeah so yeah so uh that uh, we're going a bit technical now but mortis is more can just redo the stuff he was doing for first 30 seconds i can answer that we um uh, yeah, you'd use sidebars for sculpting, for concepting, for coming up with cool ideas, and you use something like Maya for for making sure you can actually animate it and do all of that with it. But it basically, no other sculpting tool. It's a, in production. You're dealing with ZBrush and Maya, basically. Oh yeah, and if there's like, feel free to ask questions during this yeah. whole thing. Just raise your hand, and we'll at any point, or just write them down at the end as well. Uh, we're probably going to be here. Uh, our train leaves a few hours after our lecture, so we have some time just to hang out. Yeah. Almost so back to where we started. <laughs> so, like, like we said, to start off with, it's just like it's it's trying to kill the form a little bit, and then trying to like we look at our reference and see like what what do we actually have like where how are things spaced out and where do we want them to be, so. One of the issues with this sculpt is that it seems like a lot of the form has been inferred. Like you, you re you've relied too much on what you think you know about a face, or in this case, like a lion or a cat or whatever it is, instead of actually looking at uh, references of cats, or big cats in this case. I would recommend that whenever you start this, you, you assume that you don't know anything about what you're doing. Go yeah. back to to complete basics. That's really hard to do because you're like, ah, oh, I can do sculpt without looking at stuff, but you can't. It's not gonna look. It's not gonna look realistic if if you're doing that. And particularly if you're going for full unrealism as well. If you are going for something maybe a bit more stylized, then you can do more. I mean, you're gonna have to take more liberties just because otherwise you're just gonna up on a realistic line. But uh, if you're going for full unrealism, you basically have to match it one to one. So like just to point out a few things for example with with big cats like this it's once they roar that's one of the super cool things like you see it's hard to see on this monitor i don't know but the way that everything is laid out in terms of the muscles here is that you've got muscles pulling back imagine a vector going back here 
there's one going in here, you can kind of see it there. And then the skin, which is sitting on top. So it's like three planes that sort of meet in the middle. So it's not like, it doesn't actually have this super round shape to it. You want to create some corners there. We'll get more into how skin works a bit later on as well. We'll have a whole, a whole section just talking about skin. Oh yeah, leather skin, mid frequency, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so whenever you, we're starting with these kind of sculpts, taking over student work particularly, then it's, it's all just destroy the form using smooth brush. Normally we don't really use a lot of smooth brush. If you guys are familiar with ZBrush, uh, uh, you, you might you might know that you have the smooth brush which is just there but you have to hit the shift key but uh, uh, we just use mostly um, uh, the clay build up brush just because it gives you really really nice volumes but when you want to destroy the forms then just smooth everything off and get yeah. a clean base really really work with the clean base one thing as well which it might be one of the number one issues I've seen is that people they keep they, they, they add too much detail too quickly you need to keep your model as low as you can for as lo long as possible. This just means that instead of subdividing your model into like 3 million polys right away, you keep it as low as you can. And this is not because of performance reasons. This is because you, uh, otherwise you'll, you'll just automatically kind of add these little poor details and you'll, you'll fall in love with your brush strokes and you're going to be like, this brush stroke is now an actual feature. And you're like, no, you shouldn't do that. You should keep your... Uh, you should keep your base as low as possible because that means that you get the strongest shapes possible. Can't stress how important that is. We we basically only subdivide once we've um, once we've um, exhausted the resolution of it. So trying to get that pull in of the skin there. Let's see if we can find it. One thing as well, which we had a lot of questions about, is uh, whenever you're doing concept sculpting, should you do should you do like a full-on concept sculpt before, uh, like first in ZBrush, and then take it into Maya to do the teeth and do all of that, or should you do the full concept sculpt in ZBrush first hand? And this goes this question basically goes back to like a broader topic, which is when people do CG, they forget that the real world exists. They're they're trying to sculpt. Um, Let's say you do trying to sculpt uh, Jennifer Lawrence, and you have the perfect likeness. You you matched it up. The cameras are everything is matching up in the face, but um, and you're like doesn't really match. Yeah, that's because you don't have hair, makeup, eyeballs, teeth, or anything on the model. But this is a, such a common issue that you just assume that as long as the shape is matching, then it's going to look like the person. But if somebody has a different haircut or eye color or whatever, it can look like a completely different person. So. It's kind of like what Morton and I talk a lot about is basically go back to the fundamentals, go back to the basics. Yeah. This is one of them where remember that real world exists. If you're if you're doing this kind of creature like this and and you forget to do teeth, it's not going to look like the creature. Take away the teeth of a ferocious tiger or a lion, it's not a ferocious tiger or lion anymore. Take away all the claws and if it bites you, it's just kind of like it's just kind of like gums hitting your hand, like it's suddenly it's not scary anymore you just gotta remember to do to just take all on all these things and this is the, this is a thing that basically every single guy screws up as well when, when you're doing cg characters uh you just screw up the makeup yeah whenever whenever like guys everyone do, looks like a prostitute it's it's <laughs> seriously like especially when dude like when guys do makeup it's all black around the eyes pure red it's like a five-year-old putting up lipstick it's something uh, we've talked about doing a course <laughs> like doing a course on like how to do makeup for people in vfx because people it's it's horrible like it actually <laughs> looks horrible you can especially if, if guys do it not so much girls and it's kind of funny because you're like oh but makeup that's just like the final touches oh yeah that's why there's a multi-billion dollar industry and you have makeup ads everywhere it's not a subtle thing all no. these kind of things they come together you gotta you gotta think about the real world what you're doing here, you're trying to replicate the real world, or you're trying to make something feel believable. Put in all the teeth, put in all the hair. Make this model as close as you can to the real world. Speaking of teeth. Speaking of teeth. You can do some cool teeth. Uh, let's see if we can just get an indication of teeth in here. That's what we want. So the main point with this model here is really just you want clean, clean shapes. Clean, strong shapes which makes sense. 
we're not really talking too much about anatomy when it comes to this, because obviously anatomy is important, but clean, strong shapes is really one of the foundations as well. Anatomy will be a whole course by itself, but it, if you have perfect understanding of anatomy, but you can't do clean shapes, it's gonna look like a medical figure. <laughs> And you're trying to most likely you're trying to make something look appealing and not like an ecrochet sculpt from like a from like a French university in the 1800s. You uh, you most likely there's most likely a reason why you're doing a character like this. You want to tell a story, and you or you want to get a certain feeling across. If if that is your goal, then you just that needs to be your primary focus. Uh, so if you're doing this uh, this character here, and he's let's say he's supposed to be super scary, then he needs to read as super scary the first thing we, the first thing you got to do is make him read as super scary anatomy is kind of like a secondary thing if all the muscles are correct now don't write that down because <laughs> you're going to use that against me <laughs> but uh it's more important that it reads as it that it, it conveys the emotion and the story you want to get across instead of just purely purely doing a medical anatomy study but then also learn your anatomy. Definitely get your anatomy right. And you can also see how, in terms of tools, Morton is using this, this like super simple tools. It's basically like move brush and um, the clay builder brush. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> there, there is there's nothing there's nothing fancy. This is what we, what we were talking about before when it came to the the the, the, the novice of drawing versus like the master. You're not talking about the difference in because you know the pencil so much better. Uh, it's because you you're observing it. The difference between like the most hotshot sculptor in the world versus a beginner isn't their knowledge of zebra. Sure, there are some tips and tricks, and they have their dark book of all kind of wizardry you're using, but um, it's really. It's really their core knowledge of sculpture, of observation. It's like, not their million hotkeys. Like if you think about, like let's take the, take this mouth for example. Like when you think about it, you look at the you look at the reference for the line here. It's the way the teeth are structured is kind of like they make a square. So down here, it's square here. You won't have this round thing with the gums. It's square, then goes in. This then goes in. The, the round part that gives the illusion that it's like a super round fleshy thing is because we have all the flesh and like the nice lips and stuff on the outside. But this stuff here sort of makes angles. A question we, we've, we've also had whenever we're doing uh, uh, these kind of sculpts from students is, should I sculpt the teeth as separate subtools or should you keep, keep them the same? And at this point we're like, we don't care. It should just be like if Morton sculpts this as separate pieces or, or it keeps them in the same, what's important isn't isn't the technical aspect of it. What's important is, are the teeth there? Does this read as a scary looking creature? If yes, awesome. You can always fix this later on. Yeah. You can always separate it out to make the technical parts perfect. One of the things we'll get to a bit later on as well is uh, when I'm doing stuff from scratch, it's gonna be that uh, the structure of sculpting is first you get your skeleton right you don't move on until you get your skeleton right right if you're taking notes this is the time to do it <laughs> so get your skeleton right first and then once you're only then once your skeleton is right then you move on to muscle your skeleton determines so much in a character it determines the height it determines like how broad shoulders you have how strong of a jaw you have all these kind of things it determines so many things about a person. It determines if you, if, if basically, if you're sculpting a chimpanzee or if you're sculpting a human. The difference is the shapes are very similar, but it's proportion. So get the skeleton right before you do anything else, and then you move on to muscle. Second stage is you ha you move on to muscle. You can't do muscles before uh, before you have the skeleton, because the muscle is attached to the skeleton. If you don't have the skeleton, where does the muscle go? It would just kind of be floating about on the body, and um, then afterward, after you have that, then you have uh, then you have a layer of fat, and then you have a layer of skin on top as well. This is something people also forget. People forget the real world. They're just like, okay, cool muscles, and they do these insane bodybuilders, and uh, and it doesn't look natural. And you're like, why doesn't it look natural? Well, because you you forgot that people have skin. <laughs> It, kind of, it, it, sounds, it sounds silly, right? It happens more often than you'd think. In terms of like people forgetting gravity, skin, fat, everything that builds it up. Like It's because it's easy to look at something and start building it up from the outside, because that's what we see. But 
instead of take if you take an approach that's like from the inside and out instead, then you'll have a much more solid sculpt. It sounds like um it sounds like a marketing slogan for like a, a company which is like work from the inside out instead of outside in. But that's like if you if you truly understand that work from the inside out, which is skeletal muscle, fat and skin, then you then you have a formula. If you're just kind of sculpting and uh, it doesn't really look right, every single time I've I've sculpted on somebody's model and it doesn't look right, there's something which doesn't look right. It's the skeleton. There was one sculpt that was I was doing where we just couldn't figure out. Then we looked at the skeleton and the scapulas was in a com it was just flipped the entire wrong way. The shoulder blades was just completely screwed up. And if your your shoulder blades aren't going to work, how can the back work? That's how you move your arms around. So you just need the skeleton to uh, to make it work. Oh, now he's tired. <laughs> so it's just like trying to get some indication of detail in here now. But you can also see Morton hasn't subdivided this model once. This is the same same subdivision level yeah. as before. It's just squeezing out all the detail you had. Because this model, how much this had? 300,000. This is plenty for this kind of character yeah. at this level. You really don't want to take this up to like a few million polys. Yes, you'll be able to get all the pores and in and everything, but but it's not there yet. Uh, did you have a question? Yeah, I just wanted to ask that if you were to design this creature from scratch and yeah. not just refining the, the version that you have here, would you also start with the skeleton first, so you would have the skeleton with the Z brush? Yeah. So so this this is that's actually a really good question. It is like, do you insert the skeleton into it? I mean, you can. Uh, for me, it's more a mental thing I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of like, it's kind of when if you're doing figure drawing, like you don't necessarily draw a full skeleton first. You just kind of draw the overall gesture for it. You, you indicate the important landmarks like the rib cage, the hips, where the skull is, and then you just generally go from there. You can do it. Mm -hmm. If you want, if you have a skeleton, it's a good idea. I often do that when I'm doing heads. I, I've, I've downloaded like a really high poly a uh, scan of a skull which has all the bony landmarks and it's it's from the real world it's not some dude who sculpted it like it's actually a real world skull and then you throw that into like your into ZBrush have it as a sub tool and then you can really see if you're in, in the right spot or not cool. but this is also where you got to think that uh, individual variation go back to real world you can't just have a skull you got to have a skull because every skull is different that's one of the reasons people look different you can't just insert a skeleton into somebody because that determines if somebody is 150 tall or 210 tall. Like you, you gotta, but you can use it as a basis. Mm. Yeah, I think we're gonna move on soon with this. Okay. How much, how much time? Uh, two more minutes. That's good. Are you gonna do as well? I was gonna do that for Simon. Mm. Cool. So now, now he's just like adding, adding like the more, um, the more um, uh, skin, skin, the skin folds of the face. Super important to get that right as well. And we will definitely talk specifically about that and show you some super cool uh, sh shots of, of really old skin. Later yes, on. super saggy, hundred years old. It's great. <laughs> okay, I think we're almost out of time for this one. Yeah, do you have a question in the back? Uh, speaking of references, uh, do you source your images mainly from, say, Google? Or do you go to specific websites? Yeah. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter so much what site you go to per se, it's more what you're looking for. If you're looking for, if I was doing, if I was doing a lion, I wouldn't just go to Google and search for lion. I would maybe, maybe figure out if there is a specific species of, of lion or like, and, and then specifically do research on that as well. So it's, it's not so much, Google is a fantastic resource. It's just don't, don't search for what everything everyone else is searching for, because then you might just get something generic. What I often do as well is I go through Wikipedia if I, when I was, I was working at Pirates of the Caribbean a few years ago, and um, I was doing some sharks for that, and I just read everything I could about sharks. I went through the entire Great White section, Hammerhead section, and just read about that. Because that, it wasn't necessarily so much just about the visual reference, it was, a, it was about knowing how a shark worked, kind of informed the design decisions, and informed stuff like how were they gonna move and all that. And then also you learn specific things about sharks. Like you can maybe maybe there are pictures of their jaw, or you learn about their teeth and very specific specific parts. 
uh, books as well, fantastic. If you're doing a, if you're doing a shark, get proper information about it, not just from first page Google. Yeah. Did you do the uh, undead shark? Yeah, I worked. I worked on all three That's of them. Amazing. Yeah, thank you. Uh, amazing. Yeah, that was uh, that was good fun. <laughs> <laughs> that was like six months of just doing doing sharks, cool. just sculpting sculpting ghost sharks. <laughs> All right, I think uh, I think that's it for this little bat cat. So uh, let's hope that Seabrush doesn't crash <laughs> when we turn off a layer. All right, let's have a look at this. That's where we started, and that's where we're at now. So <laughs> it's just it's just trying to get some of that structure back in there. That's really all I've done. It's not I I haven't added too much detail. It, not compared to what there was. It's just rearranging the skull thinking about I like, looking specifically at the two references that I have like we talked about like we have the vectors going this way one vector going up here how the skin starts to bunch up especially here just obviously still work that could be done to restructure the skull a little bit but this is this is the key like trying to set it into the head just trying just really observing one of the really key things you'll notice here is how the head is attached if you imagine the spine going down here, right, up to the skull. But look at all this flesh. This is a perfect example of not thinking about gravity. It's almost like there's a vacuum inside the throat here. Whereas if you look at the reference, see here, also look at how long the neck is. Like, this is what we get. Yes, there's some curve in there. It doesn't, ex it doesn't necessarily sag down because it's not a super old lion. There's not too much heavy fur. But still helps to like set it in the skull and set it like attach it to the body more it's like a uh, thing about functionality again going back to real world if the original bat thing were to bite something it would break its it would break its jaw like if it was something heavy it would just it would just snap mm -hmm. at, uh, at the juggler but if the new version were to were to bite something it, it could just destroy it it could just crush it so uh, think about functionality of something something like nice <laughs> Something like um, like a lion or this, it's going to, you know, it's, it's a predator. Uh, it might have to crush bones for a living. That's how it makes its money. Yep. So, um, 